Actually, Indian elite, I believe, has got an obsession with nuclear power as much as it has an obsession with nuclear weapons. India developed nuclear weapons while developing nuclear power. So, for the Indian elite, it's a shortcut to world-class status. On the one hand, there is appalling poverty. On the other hand, you become a nuclear power and you become counted as a world-class power. Otherwise, there is no same reason why they should go in for nuclear power. As the nuclear power is concerned, it is, at the moment, it is uneconomic as compared to the conventional sources. It is intrinsically hazardous because it deals with radioactive materials and the nuclear waste that is generated, there is no fail-safe method of preserving and isolating those nuclear wastes. Mm. It will remain radioactive for generations and generations. And if there is no fail-safe method of disposing of the nuclear waste generated, there is no fail-safe method of disposing of the uh, nuclear power, outlived nuclear power plant itself. Any plant, industrial plant, whether it is nuclear or non-nuclear, by its very definition, accidents can never be ruled out. The speciality of the, the uniqueness of nuclear power plant is this here, a major accident would become catastrophic. If we look back at Chernobyl, that is 26th April 1986, at least 200,000 people were to be evacuated from a 30 kilometer radius area. And how many people have died, the figures are highly controversial, but one estimate is that more than a million have died. Though the report by the World Health Organization and the IAEA that puts the figure at 4,000. But the latest estimate is by New York Academy of Science, I believe, um, that more than a million have died. Every accident has got no, the different sets of reasons. Fukushima, we have this uh, earthquake and tsunami. In uh, Chernobyl, there was no earthquake, there was no tsunami. Mm -hmm. Before that, we had three, uh, three Mile Island. We had no earthquake, no tsunami. Jayatapur is also earthquake prone zone. But that's not the major point. The point is this, it is intrinsically hazardous because it deals with radioactive material. Mm. But it, not only that, it is potentially catastrophic, which we could see in Chernobyl and as the Fukushima unfolds, probably we are quite afraid that we will see that its impact. Even here, 30 kilometer radius, people have been evacuated from there. So its, it's impact is quite huge. So nothing can be very different in case of Jata. Mm -hmm. Accident by definition, it's an unknown unknown. It cannot be predicted. With all the risk analysis and all that, we can only try to cut down the chances of the probability rating of accidents. The, it can never be made zero. That's the very definition of accident. As I said, it's unknown unknown. So, with all efforts, the chances can be brought down. But it can never be made zero. In case of Fukushima, we saw that because of earthquake, uh, first the power supply went off. Then because of tsunami, the secondary, the backup power supply went off. It was never envisaged. Then uh, the spent fuel rods, they caused a major problem. It was never envisaged in, in advance. So these are all unknown unknowns. Actually, there will be planned to be total six, each of 1,650 megawatt. 
and these are EPR reactors which have never been built. Four are under construction. One is in Finland, the first one is in Finland, one in France itself. The company is Areva, which is a French company, and two in China. And there are many safety issues pending for these four reactors, particularly the Finland one, the first one. So it is an untested one, so we don't really know. So it's a very dangerous territory. And with six uh, reactors in the same vicinity, if there is an accident at one reactor, there is every possibility that will spread to the other five. So the accident, in case of a major accident, the impact could be really too huge and mind-boggling. In case of Finland, we have seen both time overrun and cost overrun. As per the latest figure, one megawatt power in terms of the capital cost of this Areva reactor is going to cost rupees 21 crore. So one kilowatt hour unit of electricity will be costing around rupees 7 or 8 rupees. Whereas from conventional sources, electricity per unit, that is per kilowatt hour cost is around 2, 2 and a half rupees. So it's quite a large difference. The strongest argument in favor of nuclear power is that it is clean power, which is not correct insofar as it emits radioactive rays and more than that it also emits some amount of it has got some amount of carbon footprint if we consider all across the fuel cycle but most important of all it promotes a development paradigm by virtue of producing power in a very constant centralized manner that itself is eco-destructive. Yes, so far as the land is concerned, they will be given compensation. But one-time compensation is really no compensation for lifelong livelihood. And moreover, the, there are fisher folks. So th their livelihood will also be destroyed. So fisher folks are not going to get any compensation because they do not own land. So this compensation business is really no compensation.